Hey students, welcome to another Mr. Ness screencast. Today's aim is introduction to industrial location. And here are your objectives. Please pause the video, look these questions over and get ready to copy some vocab terms and take some notes. So we are going to pause our investigation of development for a little bit, but we will come back to it later. And for the next several lessons, we're going to look at the issue of industry, not from the perspective of LDCs or of their workers, but from the perspective of factory owners. And the first thing that we're going to look at is how do factory owners decide where to build their factories? I call this idea industrial location. And this question was studied by a geographer named Alfred Weber, who developed a theory that predicted where industries will locate their factories. You will learn more about Weber's theory in class. There are a few factors that influence where a factory gets built, and the first three of them are grouped under the title of site factors. You might remember from unit one that site refers to the physical characteristics of a place. And usually site means things like climate, landscape, or resources. But when we're talking about the site factors for industry, we mean three very specific things. The first site factor is land. For factory owners, the site factor of land really refers to the cost of land. How much does the land cost to buy? Factory owners want to save as much money as possible, so they would prefer to build their factories in places where land is cheap. The next site factor is labor. And that can refer to one of two things, depending on whether or not the industry needs unskilled or skilled labor. Unskilled labor means that the work does not require any special knowledge and that pretty much anyone can do it. And if that's the case, business owners are more interested in the cost of labor, and they would like the labor to be as cheap as possible so that they save money. Textile manufacturing is a good example. Pretty much anyone can learn to operate a sewing machine quickly without much knowledge. And that's why textile manufacturers build their factories in places like Bangladesh, where labor is cheap. On the other hand, some industries like software design require skilled labor, meaning that workers must have special knowledge in order to perform their jobs well. Usually these jobs require a college degree. And for jobs that require skilled labor, business owners are not so much interested in the cost of labor, but whether or not they're gonna have access to workers that have the necessary skills. It wouldn't be very smart to locate a software company in Bangladesh because there are not nearly as many people in Bangladesh with software degrees as there are in, say, the United States. So as a result, a software company would more likely locate its business in the US rather than in Bangladesh. And the last site factor is capital, and that means the ability to access loans. Basically, this means that the location should have a stable banking system. This is important because business owners need loans to finance their operations and pay their employees. Countries that have repressive governments or face a lot of turmoil or instability will not have reliable access to capital. All right, so these are the three site factors for industry, land, labor, and capital. Take a moment and commit them to memory. The other group of important factors are called situation factors. Situation means the location of one place relative to other places. It does not refer to the things that are in a location, but instead to things that are near a location. 
There are two situation factors for industry, and the first is the proximity to inputs. And inputs are the materials that go into a product. And generally, that means the raw materials. For some industries, it's important to be near the inputs so that those materials do not need to be shipped over long distances, which can cost the business owner a lot of money. And that is especially true if the inputs are very heavy or bulky. The second site factor for industry is proximity to markets. A market is a place where goods can be sold. And when I say market, what I really mean is a city where there are a lot of people who are potential customers. Certain industries want to locate near cities so that they can quickly and cheaply ship goods to the stores where the goods will be sold. So these are our two situation factors, proximity to inputs and proximity to markets. Take a moment and commit those to memory as well. Businesses want to minimize the distance their inputs and their products are transported because of a fundamental idea in geography called friction of distance. Friction of distance means that as distance increases, the cost of moving across that distance also increases. Usually, this cost literally means extra money that businesses must pay to move their goods. Let me give you a specific example. It costs money to ship goods by train, and the greater the distance that a business needs to ship its goods, the more its shipping will cost. Conversely, if a business can reduce the distance that it needs to ship its goods, it will save money. In this example, the cost of overcoming the distance is literally more money. But friction of distance also applies to all sorts of costs that are not necessarily related to money. For example, migrants tend to move shorter rather than longer distances because moving long distances requires more time and energy. And time and energy are costs too. Even animals, when they migrate in the wild, tend to migrate as short a distance as possible in order to conserve food and energy. So the costs that apply in friction of distance can refer to money, but they can also refer to other things like time or energy. Another way of stating the idea of friction of distance is to say that the greater the distance, the more difficult it is to overcome it. Friction of distance is closely related to the gravity model and distance decay because it helps explain why those two ideas are true. As distance increases, there is less connectivity between places precisely because people prefer to move over smaller, not greater distances. So it makes sense that people far apart will interact less. However, you may remember that because of something called space-time compression, both the gravity model and distance decay are becoming less and less true. And the same applies to friction of distance. So space-time compression contradicts the idea of friction of distance. Some technologies that contribute to space-time compression are the internet, trains, and container ships. All three of these things make movement quick and easy, and they reduce, rather than increase, the costs incurred by traveling over long distances. For example, businesses can now use the internet to send information across long distances without incurring any extra costs. So these technologies are causing friction of distance to be less and less true. And now it's time to review the objectives. If you don't know the answer to any of them, just rewind the video and look again. And I will see you in class. Bye, students.